Hello there, and welcome to the exciting world of HIP. This is a new departure in language instruction. For English-speaking people who want to talk to and be understood by jazz musicians, hipsters, beatniks, juvenile delinquents, and the criminal friends. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour, monsieur. Nous allons, grâce à ce disque créé spécialement pour vous, essayer de tirer ensemble le maximum de qualité sonore de votre chaîne haute fidélité. Sit back, relax, and close your eyes. Hi there, welcome to episode two of our single malt journey. It's good to be back in the bar with you. And I wanted to take this opportunity to say a really big thank you to all the people who have sent me emails, feedback, personal messages, or mentioned it's on the forums. It's really great that you're helping to get these videos out there so that people can get to see them. I'd also like to apologize to our Scottish friends for my mispronunciation of the word I lay. Talk about a faux pas. I just had a mental breakdown that day. Today we are looking at distilling, both stripping our wash from that first episode and going through to a spirits run on a four plate bubble plate still. I'll explain to you more about the reasoning behind the bubble plate later. We're also going to look at aging and see the impact oak has on our whiskey. And I have another important announcement. We have a new website. It can be found at www moderndistiller.com That's www.moderndistiller.com There you'll find recipes, how-tos, interviews with uh, people who are important in the distilling world, podcasts, and generally it's just a sort of cool place to hang out. Anyhow, enough of that. Let's go make some whiskey. The still is made up of modular components, which enable us to run it either as a plate still, as a gin still, or indeed as a pot still. Today we're putting it into the pot still uh, configuration for the stripping run. Now, you'll see the beer is already rising because I've got the heater on, I'm preheating the liquor at the moment. So we'll just quickly get the rest of the still together. Now I'm putting on two inch components here. There are no plates and no packing in this still at the moment. It is just a straight through pot still. Now, when I first got this still, I was rather concerned about the height of it and wondering whether it would affect its, its running. But in fact, it, uh, it works very well as a pot still and I've had no difficulty whatsoever. Now I'm just try clamping this together. Now there, our parrot is on and we're ready to go. All I have to do is put my hydrometer, my alchemeter into the parrot and uh, we're running. Okay, so we're building our plated still at the moment. It's a bubble cap plated still. You see our bubble caps here, our down comers. I'm building a four plate. Now, I wouldn't go past a four plate for flavored product like whiskies. Uh, you could even go with a three plate or two plate if you wanted. All the hybrids between a pot still and a four plate will work for you. Now, the reason I'm using a plated still here is twofold. One is, Although it's traditional in Scotland to use only pot stills or variants on pot stills for single malts, I quite like a single malt that is stripped in a pot still but run through a plated still at around about four plates. The reasoning for that is that you get the peated flavours carrying over, a lot of the favourable congeners, but you also get a product that ages very quickly and is smooth to the, to the palate. Now, 
I have nothing against running double pot, and I quite often do, and it makes for a really interesting whiskey. I just find that it takes a little bit longer to age it out to the point where I'm happy to drink it. Also, I thought that it'd just be more interesting for you, the viewers, to see the plated still versus the pot still. So, to add a bit more interest to this video, I'm breaking with tradition here, and we're just going to build up our plated still and run it and see how it affects the product. Okay, so we've put the plates in, a very simple process with this still. The beauty of modular stills is really, I could run this as a single plate, a two plate, a four plate, a six plate. It's really totally up to me how much purity I'm looking for, how much reflux versus carryover of genus and flavours. So we simply try clamp that together, and that, as they say in the uh, in the classics, is all it takes. Okay, we're starting our distillation now, and we're in the process of equalising the still. Now, to do this, I've got the deflamator on full blast. It's really chilling down and knocking down virtually all the vapour that is rising in the column, and it has loaded the top. Uh, plate and that plate is then passing the liquid down through the downcomer to the plates below it. Now once I get all the plates loaded correctly then we'll start pulling off some of the product by uh, closing the deflamator off a touch and also dropping the voltage down so that we find a balance of around about 4000 watts from a start of 6000 watts and with the deflamator closed about halfway, we end up with balanced plates. Now what you see here are our plates balanced out. I never go for a large volume. Really for me, distilling is about quality. I like to see a slow distillation, good quality product, and the plates always loaded, but also a lot of interaction between the rising hot vapours, the liquid on the plate, and the cooling vapours above. Here we see some of the uh, alcohol was falling from the deflamator. Now this is my opening ABV. I'm coming in at around about 73%. My target ABV is 83%. Now this is the last of the four shots going through. You can see the, the slow rate at which I extract here. You can also see that our alco meter is fairly high. So we're probably still in the range of 70 to 80. We're starting to get a beautiful balance here in the plates. You can see the rising vapour meeting the fluid. It's flooded the plate nicely. The cooling vapours are meeting well and we've hit 83%. Now for whiskey, that is my ideal range. Any more than that, and we're starting to lose what it is that makes whiskey, we are heading towards vodka. I like uh, a whiskey that isn't too neutral. I like to taste the grain, I like to taste the peat. Now we're in the midway through, we are in our, um, our body section, we're in our hearts, and we have a nice rate of um, reflux on the plates. You can see here it's um, really a good meeting of the fluids with the vapours, and we are pulling off really high quality product at this point. Now we're well into the process of distilling this whiskey and one of the most important parts of distilling whiskey is determining what's in and what's out. In distilling of course we call this cutting or the cuts. Now we start up here with the very first liquor I took off this morning after the four shots. Of course we throw the four shots, I always throw 250 mil minimum. The first liquor, second off, third off, fourth off, fifth off, sixth off. You notice I go into a bigger jar then. I'm in the true hearts. I don't have to worry about the flavors of it. I know it's really smooth. We're in the best part of it. Now what will happen is after I do a jar like this, I go back into the smaller vessels and I gradually go back into the tails. Now then what happens is overnight, I put uh, kitchen paper over each of these and let them breathe. Now that's quite important because a lot of the congeners that are not so good on the nose actually will 
disappear overnight and will leave you with a much cleaner product to judge. Quite often, quite often, I'll put my first one or two um, draw offs, so the heads, because of smearing from the heads into the hearts of the uh, liquor, I'll put my first one or two, three, maybe, I'll take them out, I'll throw them into low wines for next time. The rest of the hearts I'll keep, and I keep a little bit of the tails, because I find some of the flavours in the tails are essential to the very essence that is a single malt. Now, how far you go into the tails will determine how long you have to age this for. The further you go into the tails, the longer it takes for it to settle down and balance out and for it to become smooth. But if you like that really strong, uh, smoky, heavy, malted whiskey flavour, go into the tails a bit. It doesn't hurt. It just takes time for it to settle down. There's a new product now, though, hitting the market that I think is probably the best I've seen for the home distiller. These are called Dominoes. Now, Dominoes are 10 mil thick pieces of oak. They're rounded over, and what I like about Dominoes, as compared to the, the rubbish you get in most of the home brew shops, in that you, know, you see the chips or the shavings of oak, the problem with shavings is they're all end grain. Now, end grain tends to extract very hard, it tends to be full of tenons, and most of the bittering aspects of the oak are in the end grain and easily extracted from the end grain. What I like about Domino's is like a barrel, they're mostly the long grain, so they're cut with the grain. And this, the actual end grain uh, part of the oak is really quite minimal. These work brilliantly. Now this is a bubble cap where the hot vapours rising meet the liquid that is coming back from the deflamator and is cooling in the column and mix with the cooler vapours that are starting to liquefy. This is the bottom of a plate. You see the down comer on the right and the holes where the vapours rise and go up through the caps above. Here we see a breakdown of the parts. As you can see, it's a very simple design. But like all simple designs, it's an elegant solution. Hi there. Well, we've come to the end of our journey now. And what a terrific journey it's been. I know I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about filmmaking and distilling. And I hope you've learned. Because if we've made you a bit more comfortable working with all grain distilling, then we've achieved something really worthwhile. The way we do it isn't the right way. It isn't the wrong way. It isn't the only way. It's just a way. The way you do it is more important that you get the results you want is the aim. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. Until next time we meet in the bar, cheers. If you go down in the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you go down in the woods today, you better go in disguise. For every bear that ever there was will gather there for certain because today's the day the teddy bears have their picnic.